This is arguably the worst Scratch game. It was made by me around 5 years ago, and it was the first game I've ever made. So in this video, I will be trying to remake this game to see if I've improved over the span of 5 years, or if Scratch has been a complete waste of my time. The game we need to remake is pretty simple. It's just a game where you are a duck that needs to run away from a fox. So let's get started. I began by giving our player the ability to move in all four directions and it looks pretty good. But something that doesn't look good is the art for the duck and fox. So I designed some new art in the pixel art style. I think it turned out pretty good and I was really happy with the designs I made. But something was missing. There weren't any animations, so I added those in. I think that the animations really breathe life into the game and make it feel so much more professional. I mean, come on, just look at that duck walking. Doesn't it just make you want to subscribe to Viper? At this point, I realized that I hadn't even made the movement code for the fox. So I threw some blocks together and boom, the fox can now move. After that, I was wondering what else I should add to this game and I remembered seeing a project from Griffpatch where he layered sprites and made things look 3D and thought about how cool it would be if I had that in my game. So after watching Griffpatch's tutorial, I made this cool 3D layering effect. And for some reason, I was really proud of this, even though I didn't make any of the code myself. The next thing that I added was a script that lets the fox eat the duck. I mean, what point is there in having a duck without being able to eat it? But little did I know that this one seemingly simple feature would drive me crazy. You see, I was having trouble with the collisions between the duck and the fox due to the layering scripts I was using. No matter what I did, my code didn't work. I tried countless different ideas, but none of them helped. I spent a lot of time just sitting down and thinking, but finally, I had a breakthrough and created Collision successfully. That took way too long. After finishing my problem, I went right back into coding and created two new foxes, just in case the first one got lonely. Right now, the foxes spawned randomly, and I planned to keep the game that way, but I still wanted some sort of a level system. So I made it so that when the duck goes to the bottom of the screen, the level variable increases, and a new random level is generated. The next thing I started working on was making the game feel more 3D. I did this by making sprites grow larger when they were closer to the bottom, and made them smaller when they were closer to the top. It's a subtle feature, but I think that it helps sell the illusion of depth pretty well. But if you look at the game right now, you will see a problem. The game is a bit too easy. So to counter this, I knew that I had to make a new feature that would make the game harder. That feature was a tree. The tree is useful for a few purposes. Its leaves can hide foxes, it can block the player, and it can make foxes change direction. Basically killing three birds with one stone. Or should I say tree? Wait, that doesn't even make sense. What am I saying? Anyways, I didn't want the tree to be annoying for the player, so I decided that I was going to make it become see-through when the player is inside of it. But what do you know? Even with the tree, the game was still too easy. So I needed to add something new. I decided that I would add coins. When there are coins in a level, you would need to collect all of them to move on. So basically, the coins can make you go into risky areas or just waste your time, which is exactly what I need. At this point, I was pretty satisfied with the progress I made until I found a problem. So. Apparently, foxes can spawn inside of trees. And when they spawn inside of them, they start going crazy, which is not something I intended to happen. I tried fixing the bug, but I couldn't find any working solution. So I had to make a compromise. Up until this point, all the levels were randomly generated. But if I made the levels by hand, then I could be certain that no foxes would be inside of trees. So I decided to make the levels all by myself. The only problem is that I now needed to worry about level design. And level design is probably my least favorite part about making games. But oh well. I still need to make levels anyways. And I managed to create 5 before getting really bored of making them. I thought I deserved a break from level design, so I allowed myself to have one and started working on a main menu. It was a real joy to create the main menu, and it was probably one of the best parts about making this project. Oh yeah. I just wanted to credit Zong Scratch for the smooth button scripts. Just look at how smooth they are. Anyways, 
I knew that I couldn't just admire the main menu forever, so I moved on to making this little display that shows the player what level they are on. After finishing, I knew what I had to do. Level design. I spent a very long time creating 10 final levels. And I know that all this level design was just a few seconds of talking for you, but this was hours of work for me. It must be good to be you. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I programmed the game so that the last 5 levels switched to nighttime and everything was dark. This made the last few levels a little bit more difficult. The next thing that I added was a storyline. I needed to come up with a story that explained why the duck was traveling so far. I decided that he was separated from his eggs and needed to go get them. Simple enough, so I started to animate an intro cutscene explaining this. But I knew that animations alone couldn't express the story, so I needed to add either a voice or text on the screen. For some reason, I decided to add a random AI voice. Anyways, after adding the AI voice, I decided that I didn't like it and replaced it with some text on the screen, so that was a pretty big waste of time. And that was basically the entire game. Now it's time to compare it to my first Scratch project. Have I improved over the course of 5 years, or have I just been wasting my time all along? This was me back in 2019. And this is me in 2024. In my opinion, I think I've definitely made some improvements over the years. And if you also want to improve your Scratch games, I've got you covered. Here is a playlist with some Scratch essentials that can level up your coding skills.